السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیئر ویورس ویلکم آل اینڈ تھینکس فار جوائننگ ان دس بلیسڈ گیدرنگ آف تسکیہ ورک شاپ ونس اگین ان نیو یارک وی آر گریٹ فل اینڈ تھینک فل ٹو اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ دیٹ ہی ہیز گیون اس دی اپارچونیٹی ٹو گیدر ٹو گیدر ہیئر اینڈ ڈسکس سم آف دا بیوٹیفل اینڈ سم آف دا موسٹ ریمارکیبل ورچوز آف دس بلیسڈ عبادت in this month of Zul Hijjah, uh, the Ibadat of Hajj. As we all know that the Hajj of 1444 is ongoing right now. Hajjis are get, have gathered already and they are still arriving from some parts of the world in the blessed uh, uh, mounts of uh, uh, blessed plains of um, uh, Ar Mina, M M Arafat and Muzdalfa and they are about to start their ritual uh, very soon inshallah so highlighting and remembering them uh, we will be hi I will be highlighting some of the some of the virtues of Hajj and also some of the hidden wisdom in this very unique form of Ibadat if you look at it from that standpoint that how different it is from other Ibadats and worships you will uh, you will come to find out out that this is one of the most unique form of worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Right from its beginning, it has been unique in its nature. Uh, this is the, the shan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he, he has created us and he, has, he knows. He knows his creation and he knows what is best for us, what is, what is good for us, what is harmful for us. So the, the legacy of Hajj begins with Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and his beloved son Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam were done building Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to go out and call the people for Hajj. Uh, at that time, there were only two people in the valley of Makkah, Hazrat Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, and his son Ismail salam. There was no one else around. So he was a little perplexed and he thought, Oh Allah, uh, I'm going to call out the message, but who is going to come for Hajj? There is no one around. Because at that time, there, had, there was no civilization, there was no mankind around. So he was perplexed and he asked this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah responded to him, uh, meaning of which is, Oh my messenger, do your job and I will do my job. Your job is to uh, announce my message and my job is my job will be to get that message heard and accounted and responded to. Exactly that's what happened. 5,000 years later our beloved Prophet وسلم, told us that when, when Ibrahim السلام, went on to the mountains of Makkah and he called out that message, that message spread across the world far and wide and it transcended the heavens and skies and it went to the souls born and unborn yet. And, uh, and whoever heard that message he responded by saying Labbaik. And the hadith, uh, hadith also tell us that those, uh, those fortunate soul, souls who, who responded to the message will be given the opportunity to attend the, the beautiful event of Hajj. Subhanallah. That's why the word labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, we call when we arrive at the place. Labba means uh, that I respond to the call. You know, I comply with the call, right? And oh my Allah, I am here. Oh my Allah, I am here. That means that you are responding to that call which we had heard spiritually and metaphysically when we were not even born. This is the beauty and uniqueness and the different nature of this ibadat. Right from the beginning it was very different. <coughs> Other very unique and interesting points uh, uh, and unusual points about this ibadat. I would like to highlight some of them. Uh, you know, uh, all are ordered to dress alike in two simple pieces of garments, right? No one is allowed to wear their feathered hats or caps or turbans or any other sign of glory or dignity with, with them. All are, all are looking alike. In fact, it becomes almost difficult to distinguish between a, an average Joe or a king. If you look at them, they are all looking alike. Because that is the essence of deen. That is the essence of humanity which Allah has descended upon us. That all are alike. Allah does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, gender, wealth or um, health status. You know, Allah, in the eyes of Allah, only He is more respectable, who is, who, He is more respectful, who is more God-fearing and God-conscious. So, that is the essence that, uh, you know, we display uh, in Hajj, that all of us look alike. Also, um, all perform the same rituals, you know, whether be it be a, a man or woman, uh, 
you know, poor or uh, sorry, wealthy or non-wealthy, um, uh, strong or weak, all whoever whoever have arrived at uh, the site of Hajj have to perform the same rituals. There's no discrimination, no distinguishment between the two, uh, between the rituals. Uh, you know, uh, another point, a unique point about this is that it uh, reflects a very beautiful hadith in 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 performing Hajj. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us to live in the world like a traveler. And this hadith is on display at every step during the Hajj time. As soon as you arrive in Makkah, you settle in your hotel, but right away you head to the Kaaba, right, to perform Tawaf and Umrah, right. And after that, you don't just settle there. You don't get contented that you have performed Tawaf and that's it. No, you are ordered to move on to Mina right from Mina, as soon as you start to settling down in Mina, you are ordered to move on to Arafat. From Arafat, you are, or, I mean, even before the day is over, you are ordered to uh, just pack up and leave for Muzdalfa, right? So the whole, you know, you go in cycle and cycle, you pack up and leave, you pack up and leave, telling you and reminding you that this life is just like that. You're not going to stay here forever. You are here for a temporary time and make best use of this time. Just imagine you are in a seminar or on a conference out of town where your whole focus is to learn something, right? So I have experienced myself and I have observed it also that all your focus is to get the most out of that gathering, out, out of that seminar. All your focus is to just think, talk and talk about the event, right? Not of anything else. So that is the essence of Hajj as well. That once you arrive in uh, at the Hajj place, at the Hajj site your only mission should be to be focused in the rituals of the Hajj so that you get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now coming on to some virtues of this beautiful ibadat of Hajj may Allah give us all the opportunity to to do Hajj Mabrur you know uh, with his grace <clears throat> As we all know, Allah has made Hajj as one of the five basic pillars of Islam. It solidifies the edifice of our religion. If any one pillar is weak, the whole edifice of your religion is weak and Allah doesn't like that. Allah likes a moment which has all the edifices of religion strong with him. Only then he will be more acceptable and liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why uh, in one hadith, uh, I will paraphrase it, uh, which says that whoever performed Hajj in a state that he was guarding against all the obscene talk, vulgarity and uh, um, the bickering, he will be returning to his home as free of sin as he was on the day when he was born. Other hadiths gives us the glad tiding of an accepted Hajj, hajj Mabrur, that the only reward of hajj Mabrur is, is um, uh, uh, is nothing but paradise. So, from one hadith, another hadith, beautiful hadith, I would say, uh, we come to know that um, Hajj and Umrah are so, so much important for your wealth also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has ordered to perform Hajj and Umrah consecutively because they will remove poverty uh, and sin from you. When Haji says, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, this message is heard by all the creatures around him. There are rocks, there are, there are plants, there are trees, there, even the ground hears that message and he, all of those creations join in chorus by saying labbaik Allahumma labbaik with the haji because it's a journey of love it's an expression of love it's a it's a season of love uh, it's a season for lovers right they are expressing their love to their creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so not only the human beings but all other creations join him in expressing their love to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by calling out labbaik Allahumma labbaik and hadith also tells us that that message of labbaik Allahumma labbaik that cry goes to the end of the earth that means that every creation around the universe is calling out Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik because everybody's love, everybody's um, uh, creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will briefly highlight some of the etiquettes of Hajj. They are also known as prerequisites for Hajj. Altogether, they are seven mentioned by Mashaikh. Uh, they are very important. They are prerequisites. If you don't, if you don't check off on the prerequisite list, you are not be, you are not going to be able to complete the ibadat of Hajj in the right in in its entirety. Uh, number one, perform your Hajj with halal uh, income. Make sure that your income is halal, and also take a pious friend with you. 
because halal income is going to fill the of fill your heart with noor and a pious friend will stop you from indulging in wrongful acts or sinful activities and he will be a constant reminder to you uh, stay on focus stay on focus and stay on focus number 2 prerequisite or etiquettes of hajj keep your intention 100% pure that is that you are going on this blessed journey just to seek happiness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no other there should be no other intention in your heart like some people have the intention of doing some business or extra side hustle or something like that that will benefit them from worldly standpoint allah negates that allah doesn't want you to impurify your uh, intention by adding any other intention in your intention other than pleasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number three prerequisite is be generous with your wallet in this journey spend on your fellow travelers you know be easy and be soft with your servants with your drivers or whoever is helping you with your mollim with your teacher don't be harsh with them you may come across some hardships or some you know tough people but be soft with them all right uh, number four guard against vulgar talking rambling and bickering with people which uh, sometimes happens out of the intense passion that you are running at that time uh, you lose control and you tend to say some words which are not uh, appropriate so you have to guard against those things th th this is the prerequisite uh, to performing a, 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 an acceptable hajj also you have to guard against showing an ostentatious behavior you know some of some of you may be able to fly first class or maybe staying in the you know most luxurious hotels you can do that but for your own comfort not for showing off or not for demeaning other people stay away from that all right <clears throat> and and lastly when you arrive there uh, not to talk of uh, ostentatious behavior you are supposed to look very disheveled you're supposed to look very indigent very poor and very miskin in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with disorderly hair with uh, with no fragrance on you you should be looking very very indigent and very very tired in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is your expression of your servitude to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the interest of time i would like to wrap it up here uh, may Allah give us the opportunity and again and again this opportunity to 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 join uh, you know the event of Hajj and attend it uh, with your acceptance. Ameen. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.